Hi everyone, just wanted to do a quick video today to talk about the performance during March of my solar panels and home battery install. So I discussed last month how I was pretty much self-sufficient throughout February. So let's see if that trend continued throughout March as well. And I'm also going to talk about the payback for the first three months of 2023 as well. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. So first let's take a look at the generation for the month of March. Total generation for the month was 346 kilowatt hours. So 79% up on February's generation of 192 kilowatt hours. Now this appears to be a really big jump, but I've watched a few other videos from people who've had solar panels for longer than me. And most have said that this year's March generation has been much lower than in previous years, which is interesting. And you can see from that 346 kilowatt hours generated that 76 went to the home, 135 went to charging the battery and another 135 was exported back to the grid. Now having so much export might not sound like a good thing. Many people say to use as much as you can yourself rather than exporting. However on the 20th of March I switched across to Octopus's new flux tariff which is paying pretty good export rates. And you can see that apart from the uh, coal snap that we had at the start of the March, I've been exporting on most days throughout the month. So it seems for me personally in my usage that I timed this switch pretty well. I've discussed the Octopus Flux Tariff in a um, video linked in the description and you can also access this by clicking on the link in the top right corner. So feel free to check this out after this video if you wish. You can see that day to day there was quite a lot of variation in the daily totals with the lowest days generation of 4.07 kilowatt hours on the 3rd of March and the highest day hitting 26.93 on the 27th of March, so a massive difference. You can still see a definite upward trend as the month goes on as well, which is good. And if we look at these two days in greater detail, you can see that on the 3rd of March, we had maximum generation of about a kilowatt during the day. And I've also included the battery percentage in this chart as it was only filled to 81% that day. Contrast that to the 27th of March, we had a peak generation of about 3.5 kilowatts. And the battery was full by about 11.40 a.m. So a brilliant day for March and exporting on flux before midday. I've also created this graph, which I think nicely shows the highest, the lowest and the average generation for the first three months. You can definitely see that upward trend between February and March as well. So I'll continue to update this as the year goes on. On to home consumption. That was 207 kilowatt hours for the month, which ties in well with my annual prediction of roughly 2,500 kilowatt hours usage for the year. However, a good chunk of this again was uh, shifting my usage away to days where saving sessions occurred to maximise my savings. And that's why you can see the consumption spikes on the 15th and the 23rd of March. And I was also on holiday towards the end of March, so that's why the usage drops off further from the 29th of March onwards. If we look at the grid import and again ignore those two big spikes, you can see that throughout the month my import was really very low as my solar panels and home battery were basically supporting the household fully throughout the most of the month. After I switched across to flux, I was undecided as to whether to charge a battery overnight to full and then use that during the day and just export everything that I make during the day um, or whether to just not use much from the grid at all, charge the batteries during using the solar during the day and then export any excess back to the grid again. And this explains the spike on the 25th of March where I was messing around with the system just trying to figure out what was best. Now there's different opinions on this and I can see benefits to both, but ultimately for me as a relatively low user, not drawing much from the grid and then filling the battery with solar during the day is currently my preferred method, but this could change. And I know for some rates in the UK, there's maybe three, four, five pence difference between the nightly import rate and the daily export rate. But for me in the Northeast, there's only 1.75 pence. So if we look in more detail at the export, you can see that we have a total of 169 kilowatt hours export for March. Um, and that increased as well as I switched to flux on the 20th and occasionally discharged the battery during the 427 peak PM period. This bodes well for the rest of the year as the days get longer. It should give us a good start with a payback of the system. Speaking of payback, let's look at the figures and see how much we've saved throughout the first three months of 2023. So there's lots of assumptions here and I've done my best with the calculations, but if you do notice anything that's not quite right in my calculations, just let me know in the comments below. So the initial cost for the system was 10,980 and I've included a small amount of savings of about £26 from December 22 when the system was installed halfway through the month. So if we look at the assumptions, I've assumed if I was not on the Octopus Smart Tariffs, I would be on the Energy Price Cap Guarantee and paying 34 pence at all times for electricity for the first three months of the year. 
I haven't included the standing charges in these calculations as I'd be paying those whatever tariff I was on anyway. I was on Octopus Go up until the 20th of March where I then switched to Flux, hence the cheap and high rates in the calculations up to February. Um, and I also I haven't included the saving sessions in these calculations for earnings, although I have included the import costs during these sessions. Battery certainly helped to maximise the savings during these times. However, I still could have made pretty decent earnings without the battery and with some careful energy management during these times as well. If I had included these, it would have added £171.59 to the total payback. So next, if we look at the earnings, you can see the consumption varying in the three months between 164 to 260 kilowatt hours for the month. I think this is going to be pretty standard throughout the year, around about 200. Another highlight for me is how the import decreases between January and February, as I wasn't needing to charge a battery on a night so much. And you can see the generation and export figures as the months go on, there's a definite upward trend there. If we look at the export payments, we had 29 pence in January, we had £2.37 in February, and we're looking at £29.91 in March. So that's a combination of additional solar generation and also moving to the flux tariff towards the end of March as well. Now the costs without solar, we're looking at £88 for January, £55 for February and £70 for March. And the costs with solar, we're seeing £43 in January. £12 in February and minus £12.36 in March as well. So savings of £45 in January, £43 in February and £82 in March as well. So a big jump there, which is good to see. And if we look at the cumulative savings up to March now, we are up to £197.67, and pence, which when I first calculated these figures was a little underwhelming, but I think I need to bear in mind that this is the worst winter months when we have the darkest days, so it's only going to get better from here. I've also created a graph which shows the monthly saving figures and also the cumulative savings. So I'll continue to update, update this as time goes on. And if we look at the chart for generation throughout the first three months of the year, again, you can see a big increase as the months pass by. So yesterday I added a question to the community post whether I would have negative bills for gas and electricity for the month of March. I've shown that for electricity, thanks mostly to the solar export, that our bill was minus £12.36. However, if we add the standing charge back onto that, we get a total bill of £2.70. And unfortunately, I also have gas central heating as well. So if we add the gas charges for the month of March, then that comes to a total of £67.10. So unfortunately, not quite negative yet, but I'm very hopeful for April as the export increases. We have a full month on flux and our gas usage hopefully decreases as well. Please feel free to let me know if you have a solar and battery install, how yours got on this month in the comments below. And if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask away. And if you would like to subscribe to Octopus, please consider using my referral link on the screen now. I get £50 and you will also get £50 added to your account using that referral link. Thank you so much to everyone that's used the referral code so far. It really, really helps me. And as always, if you found the content useful, please consider liking this video and also subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.